In this very special lesson, we're gonna be looking at how the humble double cheeseburger can really make a difference to your IELTS score in the writing task too. A delicious tip to help you get a level seven. Cheers. The structure of a double cheeseburger can really help you with the IELTS writing task too. Every single essay type, including advantage, disadvantage, cursive essay, and the give your opinion on whether you agree or disagree, can all be structured in the same way as the cheeseburger. Let's just have a quick look at how the cheeseburger is structured. First we have the top bun and we also have a bun on the bottom that holds all the meat inside. Now there's two burger patties or two burgers if you're not American and they make up the meat of the burger. However we need the bun to hold it together because we're not on a low carb diet. But we do need the both buns to hold it together and to keep its structure. If your hands were kettle greasy it wouldn't be very pleasant to eat. The IELTS writing task 2 is exactly the same way. Even though the important bit is the meat, I like to call it the meat of the essay, it should always be structured in the same way as a double cheeseburger. An introduction, two body paragraphs, and a conclusion at the end. Let's have a look at how this works for each of the five different IELTS academic writing task 2s that you could get in your exam. The first type of essay we're going to be looking at that fits this structure is the opinion essay on whether you agree or disagree with a statement. The first thing you should always do is plan. Choose a side, do you agree or disagree? Then you need to think of reasons, key reasons, why you agree or you disagree. This will help you when it comes to writing your actual essay if you already have the ideas ready. If you would like me to make a video on how to generate ideas, just make a comment in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. In the agree or disagree, after you've chosen a side, you need to write your introduction. And in that introduction, you need to make sure that you include a thesis statement. A thesis statement is basically an overall statement saying what the essay is going to be about, what you're going to talk about in your main body, and whether you agree or you disagree. After you've written your introduction, you go into the first body paragraph, which will be your first main idea. Explain your main idea in the topic sentence, which sums up what the whole paragraph is going to be about. After you've added your topic sentence, you can add examples and reasons for your choice to flesh out the meat of the essay. The second part of the meat will be the second reason why you agree with the statement. Also, you need to have a topic sentence. And you also need examples and reasons that are around that topic sentence. So things like facts, statistics, things that have happened to you, your experiences. Finally, you need to write a conclusion. And in that conclusion, you need to write a concluding statement which sums up if you agree or disagree and maybe a quick summary of the two reasons that you have chosen in your essay. That's it, that is the burger structure for an agree or disagree essay. Let's have a look with a real example. Some people think that arts-based subjects such as dance and drama should be compulsory in the high school curriculum. They believe that these subjects can improve students' overall grade. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So this question is asking you whether you agree or disagree with artistic subjects being included in a high school curriculum on a compulsory basis, which means they have to do them. The opposite of this would be on an elective basis, which means that they choose to take them or not, but they are not compulsory. I would decide whether I agree with arts being compulsory or I disagree with arts being compulsory and I would plan my answer. After I plan my answer, I would write in the introduction, I would quickly paraphrase the question about the arts, I would offer a thesis statement, and I know from my plan in this body paragraph, I'm going to be talking about the students that study art have a better overall grade in high school. And in the second paragraph, I'm going to be talking about how art fosters creativity and imagination and business people like that when they are hiring people. Finally, in the conclusion, I'm going to sum up my points quickly and then give a concluding statement. I fully agree that art should be compulsory in school because it helps your imagination, it raises your overall grade and it makes you more attractive to employers. Up next is the advantages and disadvantages essay type. The next essay that fits into the structure is the advantages and disadvantage question. You will get a question something like this. Space travel is becoming more and more common, but it costs a lot of money. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this? 
In this type of question, it's not asking you for your opinion, it's asking you to sum up the advantages and the disadvantage of the topic or the issue that it has given you. So in this case, it's space travel. So again, you start off with an introduction, but here you don't need a, you don't need a thesis statement. In this introduction, you can just paraphrase the question and say that you are going to look at the advantages and the disadvantages. Then in body paragraph one are the first parts of the meat of the essay you discuss all the advantages. Okay, maybe give one or two examples of advantages of space travel, such as you get to see the world from a high place and astronauts usually come down wanting to protect the environment. Or maybe you can find new fuels in space by mining asteroids. Then you think of the disadvantages. So in body paragraph two, and this can be th these can be things like there are better things we could spend our money on on Earth, such as helping eradicate poverty or by protecting the environment and not spending all the money on the spaceships and the jet fuel, or whatever it is. Then in your conclusion, in the end, you just summarize the main points. Maybe you can say in some cases it's OK to go into space, but in others, maybe the money would bent elsewhere. You can always offer a compromise or a halfway meeting point. In the next example, we're going to be looking at the problem solution essay. Okay, you should be getting the hang of this now. If you're getting any value from this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're doing your IELTS. Don't subscribe if you're not. It's a waste of time. If you are doing IELTS, please subscribe to the video because you'll get access to all the new content that comes out every week. The next type of essay is the problem solution essay. Let's have a look at one. Unemployment is a growing issue around the world. What can governments do to reduce this problem? In the problem solution essay, in your introduction, you should just have a quick outline of what you're going to be talking about. Paraphrase the question. In body paragraph one, you should be writing about the problems. So in the question, it talks about unemployment. So what are the problems of unemployment? You can talk about things like people not having enough money to live or have shelter or be able to feed their family. You might have something about making them turn to crime if they have nothing to do throughout the day. These are where you put your problems. Try and have one or two in the problems section of your essay in the first main burger. The second one, obviously, is the solutions. Here it asks what governments can do to reduce the number of unemployment. So have so, think of some ideas, especially in your plan. They could give training or give free training to people who don't have jobs. They can create jobs for people in the government. They could put a limit on how many robots they are allowing into the workplace. All of that will help reduce the unemployment. In the conclusion, you should summarize your main solutions and maybe offer some benefits of implementing the solution. The next essay type that could come up is the discursive essay. Let's have a quick look at one. Some people think that smoking should be totally banned, but others disagree. Discuss both sides and give your opinion. You can also use the double cheeseburger structure to write a very good discursive essay. Here's how to do it for the question that just came up on the screen about smoking. In the introduction, you need to talk about how some people think it should be banned completely, whereas other people don't want it to because why they don't want to. You should have that in your plan. In your introduction, you summarize the argument and then in body paragraph one, you talk about why people want smoking banned. Pros of banning smoking. And then you have the cons. Okay, so what would the cons of banning smoking be? Maybe you're limiting the freedoms or you're giving government too much power. Or some people will say, it's my body, I can do what I like with it. So you have these in the cons. The first burger or the first body paragraph, you give the pros, then in the cons. And at the end, you, could, you can offer an opinion if the question asks you to, but in the most side, it's best to find a compromise. Maybe you could have something like, smoking should be banned for anybody under the age of 25. Smoking should be allowed, but people should not be allowed free healthcare if they smoke. Or smoking should be allowed, but they, people have to pay more insurance. The final of the five essays is the direct question or the double question. The question will just ask you a direct question or it'll give you a statement with two related direct questions underneath. Have a look at this example. Parents and guardians often let children do whatever they want with little consequence. Is this good for children? 
What will happen to these children when they grow up? In this type of question, you would paraphrase the statement that it gives you and hint at the possible answers that you're going to have in the meat of the essay. So in the introduction, you can say, in recent times, parents have been letting their children get away with anything they want, and they often indulge them with en without any punishment at all. Then in the first body paragraph, you answer the first question. So in the first body paragraph, you need to give your opinion on whether it is good for children or not. I think it isn't. And then you would give a couple of reasons reasons why it is not good for the children. In the body paragraph two, you answer the second question, which is about what the consequences are for them children going up, which probably means they'll be spoiled or they might become psychopaths. We don't know, but what well, you will know because you've planned, but that is what goes in the second body paragraph. In the conclusion, you should summarize your main points in the body paragraph and link back to the statement that it gave you in the question or that you wrote in the introduction. There you have it. That is how the Humble Burger can help you get a band seven in the IELTS writing task too. If you've watched this whole video and are asking, yes, but Adam, where's the cheese? Where's the cheese in the double burger? That is for another video. But if you're interested in the video, please type in the comments, where's the cheese? And I'll give you a shout out in the video where I explain the metaphor of the cheese. I'll give you a hint. It involves linking words. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so you'll be notified when any other new videos come out. This channel is completely dedicated to helping you get a good mark in your IELTS task and burgers. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I know it was a different video to normal, but if you like it, you can also try some of these other videos while I enjoy this burger. Mm. So cold down.